In our society, there's like this commonly held belief that life is supposed to be hard and that you're not supposed to enjoy it or be happy all the time. And what really made me realize this is that people I worked with on a consistent basis had this theory that I was taking mushrooms every day before I came to work because I was just happy and in a good mood a majority of the time. And it was hard for them to even realize that you can be in that state without mushrooms, without coffee, without any other substance if you just take care of what you're doing on a daily basis. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys what I've learned, what I do to maintain a consistent, positive mood a majority of the time. Nobody can be happy 100% of the time. I still have my lows, but I would say that I've raised my floor in terms of my mental health so that I do consistently show up at a level that I want to show up. And you guys can do it too. It's a very actionable thing where if you just take these steps, you will notice results. And so the first thing that you're going to want to take a look at is your sleep. I know everyone says this, but if you're not getting good sleep, you're not going to feel good. And it's simple as that. There are a few simple things that you can do to improve your sleep that are going to reap a lot of benefits in terms of your mental health and your happiness and how you show up. The first thing is getting on a regular sleep schedule, waking up and going to bed around the same time. The second, there's a lot of small little habits that you can tweak to help with this, like removing blue lights about an hour to two hours before bedtime, um, getting sun exposure early first thing in the morning and as much sun exposure throughout the day as you can. Not eating three hours before bed was a big one for me to improve my sleep quality. I like to use a sleep mask um, when I'm sleeping and also blue light glasses before I go to bed. And also what you do before going to bed and right upon waking up has a profound impact on the rest of your day because you are kind of in this subconscious state. So before bed, I try to be conscious of my thoughts. I journal out any of the negative things that happen the day. I try to think of things that I'm grateful for and then I just read until I fall asleep. And I feel like this primes my mind to be in a good state when I'm asleep, have positive thoughts, positive things going on. And then I wake up, it's a similar thing where I'm trying to be conscious of my thoughts. I'm trying to have gratitude and just be grateful for that I woke up each day. And doing this, being conscious of the last thoughts before sleep and the first ones waking up, you kind of program your brain to look on the bright side and be in a good mood. And there are more ways you can do this. If you want to learn more, leave a comment down below. I'll put you guys on. But the next thing is movement. If you're someone that works out like I am, you might notice if you don't work out for a few days that you just turn into a bitch. <laughs> if you're like me. I... Uh, I don't feel like myself if I don't work out for a few days and I think that goes to show how important it is to have movement on a regular basis, both resistance training and ideally some cardio. I typically stick to a majority of resistance training, but simply getting in the gym three, four times a week, going for a run three, four times a week will have a profound impact on your mental health and literally the chemicals in your brain and body. It will make you feel better. It is a proven fact. Um, and it's also going to extend your lifespan and also just improve your self-image by improving your body composition and, and the way that you look at yourself and see yourself. The next thing is your diet. These two go hand in hand. So making sure that you are getting the, like, the proper macro and micronutrients that your body and your brain need to function, function at a high level is going to be vital in optimizing your mental health and your happiness. And so you can do this by just eating more fruits, more veggies, less processed foods. The ideal that you want to strive for is no processed foods at all. Everything, one ingredient coming straight from the ground. That's hard in the society that we live in. I'm not perfect. I don't even do it all the time either. But trying your best to limit the processed foods, to eat a whole bunch of different colors in your diets, your fruits, your veggies, high quality meats, high quality carbohydrates, um, not stuff that's just gonna boost your blood sugar and have it drop right after. And that's really going to like help because I notice myself when I'm eating clean, I feel sharp, I feel clear, I feel, I literally feel clean when I'm eating clean. It's like, it's hard to explain, but you guys have probably experienced it too. Versus when I'm slipping from my diet, I don't quite feel the same. Um, and so this is actually one area where I'm 
tapping in, get tightening it up in this next week, um, really cleaning up my diet. So if you guys want to learn more about how I'm eating, drop a comment down below. And also an important part is having a regular eating window. Eating at around the same time each day helps with your circadian rhythm so that your body comes to expect food at a certain time. It's really interesting. Once your body gets used to a schedule, it actually releases your stomach acids and like gets your body prepared for a meal at that same time each day. And this also helps uh, with your sleep. Well, if you're having on a, on a, eating on a consistent schedule and sleeping on a sch consistent schedule, these two kind of go hand in hand. And like I said, ending your eating window around three hours before you go to sleep is going to help with your sleep quality. And intermittent fasting is something I've been experimenting with lately that I think has a lot of benefits and value, uh, but I'd encourage you to find your own truth and figure out what works best for you. The next most important thing is having positive social interactions. Now, humans are social beings. We are meant to interact with people around us, our environment, to connect, and the problem is not all of our social interactions are created equal. A lot of social interactions will actually bring our energy down and make us sad because people are just used to complaining and talking about sad stuff all the time. But if you are able to find people or a group of people where you are able to have positive and uplifting social interactions, you will notice that it you leave those interactions with a new level of energy, a smile on your face, energy to go do and create and conquer. And those are the interactions that you need to consciously seek out and consciously put more of into your life because these are the ones that will boost your mental health, will help you become the person that you want to be. And it's also fun. It's fun connecting with people that light you up, that fill you with energy, that put a smile on your face. And so creating as much of those interactions in your life as possible is one of the huge keys, keys to being so happy that people think you're on drugs. And the crazy thing that I realize is that you can be this interaction for people. When you show up with a smile, when you ask someone how their day is, you have a genuine conversation with them, it will bring them up and give them a positive social interaction. And it also brings you up and gives you a positive social interaction, knowing that you are helping someone else. And so that's just a, a key insight that I found myself that I love to do. Um, it's probably why people thought I was on shrooms in my last job. But the next thing is to be conscious of what you're consuming, to consume less and create more. Because whether you realize it or not, what you are consuming goes into your mind and your subconscious and it gets stored somewhere. There's inputs and outputs. If you're taking in low quality inputs, there's gonna be a low quality output. And so don't be listening to all this sad, negative stuff. Don't watch the news. Don't watch things that are bring, gonna bring you down because that just drains your energy and stops you from being happy. And so it's really important to curate what you what you watch, curate what you listen to so that it gives you your desired output. Me, I don't really watch the news. I, I mind my own damn business 99.9% .9 of the time. And when I am watching something, it's something that I'm learning from. And when I'm listening to music, it's music that has a positive message and lifts me up and makes me spot, like feel a little bit inspired and want to create music of my own. And so I hope that you guys are able to find artists and make perhaps influencers or creators that have that same effect on you and begin to notice the ones that aren't having that effect and cut them out. Because if you're not getting the output that you want from your inputs, stop, stop consuming that stuff and find a creative outlet for the things that you learn or even just a creative outlet in general. Having something to create, somewhere to put your energy into, even if it's just art, even if it's a um, an instrument, that is, I think, one of the keys to mental health is creating. We're not meant to just consume all the time. We are meant to create. And so I hope that you can find those avenues in your own life and begin to find more fulfillment in that. I mean, next, arguably one of the most important things that you can do uh, I think these last five things were like setting a foundation for your mental health. This step right here will not only add to the foundation, it will make setting the foundation easier. And that is doing the like deeper work on yourself. Because a lot of people have these traumas or past experiences that are stored within them that they don't really know about, but that manifest themselves in undesirable, undesirable ways 
or undesirable habits or patterns like oh I don't know why I binge eat all the time when I get lonely or I don't know why I can't break this negative habit that I feel guilty about getting to the root cause of these issues looking back on yourself has a profound effect on your mental health and how you show up on a daily basis. And so looking back, figuring out why you feel the way that you do around certain things, the things that trigger you, these negative habits, asking yourself why. And then once you have the answer to that, ask yourself why again. Keep going deeper and deeper down to the root of these problems. This is something that I think some people call shadow work, but really making that unconscious part of yourself more conscious is going to be instrumental in helping you let go of these things from the past that are draining your energy and keeping you way down and help you to move forward with a bigger smile on your face. And I think that's one of the areas that has helped me is with a lot of like so many, so much journals, uh, so many journals and journaling, I've been able to let go of a lot of the stuff that is weighing me down. And when you just let go of that stuff, you rise up kind of naturally. It's not even like a, an effort thing. It's like once you let go of the things that are holding you back, you rise up naturally. It's, it's just an, like a cause and effect. And so the more things that you can find to let go of, and also not storing new things in yourself, learning how to let go of situations, things, resentments as they come up instead of holding on to them, you will elevate into a much higher state of being. You will feel much happier. Your smile will be much bigger, much more real, and much more authentic. And I promise you guys, if you put the work into these steps, if you do all these things, you will see results in your life. And that is a promise. And if you guys want help implementing these different things, making change in your own life, book a free call down below on my website. I would love to chat with you guys and see how we can get the ball rolling. I appreciate you guys watching. If you stay to this point, you are amazing. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.